hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and read Sonnet 75 to you. Um, I will replace the words that you are not familiar with with the ones at the bottom so that way we can understand this as I read. So here it says, um, one day I wrote her name upon the beach, but came the waves and washed it away. Again, I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made my pains his prey. Vain man, said she, that doest in vain a say, which a say means to try. So what you do, is, you're trying is in vain. Um, a mortal thing so to immortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay, and also my name will be wiped out likewise. Not so, said I, let baser things devise, to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare, shall eternize, and in the heavens write your glorious name. Whereas, where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. Okay, so remember sonnets are love poems, so we know that this is um, something he is doing in a kind of romantic sense for this woman that he's, he's speaking with, okay? So that's that's one thing I want to talk to you about. We have two speakers. We have um, the, the man who is writing the name in the sand, and we have this woman who is kind of talking to him about that, okay? So first things first, we do sonnet structure, okay? Um, like we did with Sir Thomas Wyatt, you know, the first thing that we notice, how are these, how are these um, lines divided? It is following the Spencerian sonnet structure. It's divided into three quatrains. So what I'll do is I can draw, you know, an arrow off of one of them and just write quatrains. Divided up into quatrains would suffice here. So I'm going to write that down and then I'll show you what I did. Divided into quatrains. And then maybe I'll put in like parentheses three. Okay, so I did that right here divided into quatrains and I wrote three. Okay, so you can see one, two, three, four lines each. Okay, and then the final characteristic in terms of line division would be the couplet. So I'm gonna write that down there, um, couplet. Remember a couplet equals two lines. So there's my, my two lines there, couplets written next to it. All right, next thing that I'll do is I'll kind of look at the rhyme scheme. I'll read the words to you, the ends of the, the lines out loud, and then we can kind of verify that it does follow that Spencerian sonnet rhyme scheme. So it says, strand, away, hand, pray. Assay, immortalize, decay, likewise. Devise, fame, eternize, name. And then finally, subdue and renew. Okay, so um, strand, the first word, we obviously start off with an A. We notice that away does not rhyme with strand, so we put a B there, so it's A, B. Um, hand rhymes with strand, so we put a letter A there, and then we conclude that first quatrain with a letter B because pray and away rhyme. So looking at the second quatrain, it does the same thing, um, but with new, uh, well, it's gonna borrow a rhyme from the previous one and then work, work on. So anyway, a say, uh, does it rhyme with anything? Yes, it does. If you look at the first quatrain, away, pray, assay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a letter B there. And then um, looking at the next word, it says immortalize. Does it rhyme with anything so far? No, it does not. So I'm going to put a letter C there. Decay, it rhymes with assay, pray, and away. So I'm going to put a B. And then likewise rhymes with immortalize. So I'm putting a C there. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I've done so far so you can see. So A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C. So he borrows a rhyme from the previous quatrain and begins this quatrain that way, okay? So now I'm gonna show you um, the next quatrain. It says devise, which we know um, does rhyme with the previous quatrain. So um, up in the previous quatrain, we wrote C's for that. So devise will be a letter C. Fame um, doesn't rhyme with anything so far. So we put a new letter, which would be the letter D. And then eternize rhymes with devise, so we go ahead and put a C there. And then finally, the letter D, because name rhymes with fame. And this is what I've done so far. So it's A, B, A, B, B, C, B, C, C, D, C, D. And then we're going to conclude with this couplet here. So subdue does not rhyme with anything that we've done so far. So we put a new letter there. It would be letter E. And then renew um, rhymes with subdue, so we put an E there as well. Okay, so couplet, E-E. All right. 
So that's uh, what we've done structurally so far. So once we've done that, we can move forward and kind of talk about um, what the sonnet actually is telling us. So we'll go quatrain by quatrain and then we'll put it all together. Um, so the first part says, one day I wrote her name upon the strand, but came the waves and washed it away. Again, I wrote it with a second hand, but came the tide and made, made my pains as prey. I think it's pretty easy to understand that this guy, um, they're at, they're at a beach because that's what the strand means. And, and he's writing her name in the sand. Okay. I don't know how many of you have been to a beach, but if you have, and you've drawn anything into the sand, um, we know that the ocean tide comes in and wipes that away. It's never permanent. Okay. Cause I write, even if I, no matter how many times I write that anything in the sand, the, wa the waves are going to come and wash, wash, wash. Okay. So it just lacks that permanence there. Okay, so that's just showing that he's done it once, it, it took it away, he did it again, the waves washed it away again. Okay, moving on to the next quatrain, it says, Vain man, said she, that doest in vain assay, a mortal thing so to immortalize, for I myself shall like to this decay, and uh, also my name will be like, wiped out likewise. So, you know, in this quatrain, we have this woman here um, who is watching this guy write her name in the sand, and it keeps being wiped out and you know she's pointing out to him that what he is doing isn't going to stick around right like that it man you're like wasting your time here the waves are going to just keep washing it out she says that you cannot really immortalize something that is mortal so if we're, we're going to go beyond just writing a name in a sand here and just look at people in general nobody lives forever okay we're all mortal we all die we're not invincible so you know like the waves washing this away time will take me away. You know, I will not live forever. Um, I will decay is what she's telling us in, in that third line of that second quatrain. And she says, you know, like my name, I will be wiped out. Okay, so she's kind of being realistic here and pointing these things out to him. Um, looking at the third quatrain, he says, not so, quoth I, for let baser things devise to die in dust, but you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues rare shall eternize, and in the heavens write your glorious name. Okay, so in this quatrain, he doesn't agree with her. You know, he says, not so. That's not going to happen. Um, he says, basic things will die like that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Everybody else is basic. Everybody else is simple. Yeah, they're all going to be wiped out. They'll be forgotten. But I have a way to make sure that you will not be. You know, I have a way to immortalize you. And if you look um, on line three of that third quatrain, He's telling her how he's going to do that. He says, my verse, your virtues rare shall eternize and in the heavens write your glorious name. So if you look at the word verse, um, when you think of verse, you think of a verse from maybe the Bible or a verse from a song or whatever it is. Um, they all, what they all have in common is that they're written. They're in writing. They're in a book. They're published. Um, so he's kind of saying that I will immortalize you. You will live on by my writing about you. Okay, I will be, I'll write my poems, singing your praises, and that's how you're going to live on. So even after we die, people will be reading about you and remembering who you are and remembering our love. Okay, so, um, so he's figured out a way to make sure she does not die. Um, and then finally, I'm um, looking at the, the couplet, which is uh, wrapping things up. He says, where when as death shall all the world subdue, our love shall live and later life renew. Okay, this is where we do see the Volta. You kind of can sense when I read this out loud to you, a change in his thought process and his argument. Um, it, it's just kind of like that final last line. I'm going to wrap it all up by saying, yeah, that when death kills everyone off, everybody dies, you will not die. Every time someone reads my writing and reads my poems about you, our love will be renewed each and every time. It, it lives on that way. How many times do we see that? You know, I, every time you read something, it, you know, like Beowulf. Beowulf continues to be relevant. He still continues to stick around because we continue to read about him. Doesn't die that way. So anyway, um, that's what Sonnet 75 is telling you, okay? Um, remember before I, I conclude here that you write down where the Volta lies, which would be that couplet, so line 13. I'm going to draw an arrow and write Volta down here and then show you, whoops, I forgot an L in there. I promise I know how to spell. So anyway, it's going to look a little ugly, but I've got it. Volta, line 13. Right? 
Um, that should basically be all. I do want to uh, point out to you, and I don't know if I said this with Sir Thomas Wyatt's poem, but if you um, had trouble understanding it the first time, as I go through and kind of talk to you about it, it might be good to like put something down after each quatrain or each section in your own words. So when you go back to reference these poems, you, you know, you remember what it's actually saying. Okay. Or I guess you could probably, um, just watch these videos again. You can do it that way too. But, uh, but if we were in class normally, that's how, what I'd have you guys write down is just quickly summarize in each section what the poem is telling you. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, as always, just let me know if you do have any questions still. Um, and you know, as, as always, I'll do my best to get to you as soon as possible and help you out with those. So anyway, hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will talk to you again soon with Sonnet 30.